the Phoenix Sun is setting on the 98 season. Mile Track Jack has the point lead, and the dream of winning back-to-back -back titles is his driving force. The major roadblock is a focused rival, Ron Hornaday. Charging hard, and with two races remaining, the upcoming Duel in the Desert will be a major factor in determining this year's champion. And as you talked about a moment ago, it's down to it for the 1998 championship. Jack Sprague leads Ron Hornaday by just 28 points. There have been seven races here at Phoenix. Jack Sprague has won three of them. Jack, why do you like this track so much? Oh, I don't I don't really know. Uh, I just this is a great racetrack. I have a lot of fun racing here. And I'll tell you, the guys have given me a great truck once again. Uh, the team JMAC Chevrolet came off the hauler fast three days ago, and it's been fast ever since. And if it's in the same shape today as it has been all week uh, i think we got something for him so jack sprague is out in front early now unlike in the winston cup tour they don't pay bonus points in the craftsman truck series for leading the most laps so he's not gaining anything by being out in front championship wise other than he's three spots ahead of hornaday and the rest of what he's gaining is a good bit of intimidation as well he has led the most laps five races in a row here at phoenix and if you ask the other drivers who's got the best team who's got the best shot to win this thing it's number 24. Jack Sprague, boy, he has been strong at this Phoenix Mile over the years. See, three poles, three wins and seven starts, third or better in the last five races. We asked point leader Sprague how he approaches this race with just a 28-point advantage. Well, not really. Uh, you know, it's a tight points battle, and I don't think either one of us would rather be this tight, but it is. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunately, one of us has to lose this thing, and one of us is going to win. But, you know, I love Phoenix. Uh, boys seem to have a good truck here. The guys have given me another great truck here. The team here makes the run going off well. Uh, you know, I want to win the race. I really want to win the race, but most importantly, I just need to get out on Ron. And uh, that'll be first and foremost, and win the race will be second. <laughs> win the race. <laughs> yeah, that's his strategy every race, though. He just wants to win every single time. And that is a Hendricks truck right there. And the number, number 24, he's doing what Jeff Gordon's doing on the other side in Winston Cup in this particular division. Jack Sprague is tremendous talent. Steve Burns has more on Jack Sprague from down on Pit Road. Steve? Well, the first thing to report, Alan, is that Jack Sprague is saying he's a little bit loose coming off the corners. That means the back end wants to come around. Now, the entire truck series headed west October 7th for a race at Sears Point. Talk to the guys on Jack Sprague's team this morning. They said they will have been on the road from October 7th, and they won't go home until October 30th. They all live near the Charlotte, North Carolina area. As soon as this race is over, they go to Las Vegas for a testing session. 23 days in a row on the road. It's a lot of time to live out of a suitcase. How tall does the grass grow in 23 days? <laughs> Back live at Phoenix International Raceway on TBS under caution for the first time for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series event this afternoon. Jack Sprague, the race leader, coming back to the caution flag, had a rather interesting moment. Let's take a look at it now. And Sprague in the middle. Watch Rick McRae in the 61. Rick McRae comes in, misjudges just a little bit. He runs right into Sprague. Look at the right front corner there. The valence torn up just a little bit on the right front corner. They see Mike Wallace's truck there in the front of your frame. Here's the reason for the caution. Watch Mike. A little contact maybe with Jay Sauter. Right front tire down. You can see the header's really rubbing hard as he gets down into turn three there. The, the bottom side of the truck was really rubbing hard. Now, pit stops happened under this caution flag, but Sprague stayed on the racetrack. The top two, Sprague and Rutman, did not come down pit road. Others did, including Ron Hornaday and most of the rest of the trucks on the lead lap. Let's go to pit road. Steve Burns has more on Jack Sprague. Well, Alan, it appears there may be trouble here in the pits. Apparently, Jack Sprague cannot hear crew chief Dennis Connor. He is walking out towards turn two. Jack Sprague, they wanted him to pit. As Buddy Baker said, there's damage to the right front. He apparently did not hear him. Let's go back upstairs. Well, that's an interesting twist there. Now we're 50 laps into the race. Sprague did not pit here. Hornaday has fresh time. Now I wonder if uh, Joe Rutman's passing a message there. Uh, what he's doing is looking it over, either telling him, you know, it's rubbing or it's okay. Uh, that's kind of tough uh, when you have to ask a guy that's trying to catch you whether you have anything rubbing or not. Yeah, do you believe the guy that's running in second place <laughs> when he tells you, oh, man, your truck just looks awful. Oh, good. That's going to pit. Yeah. <laughs> Must have passed a message on to him, said, hey, your crew's calling you. So here comes Jack Sprague. This is going to cost him some track position because he's going to come out probably the last or second to last truck on the lead lap which is going to put him back 22nd or 23rd when we go back racing 
Sprague moving at the 45 mile an hour pit road speed limit all the way down around the inside pit road. You see it hooks inside of turns one and two. And Steve Burns awaits the GMAC truck along with the rest of the pit crew. Steve? And there is pretty significant damage to the right front quarter panel of the number 24 track of Jack Sprague. They're going to change right side tires. Crew Chief Dennis Connor was very unhappy that they could not get the radio communication squared away. Howard Shipwash, one of the crew members, pulling the sheet metal away, trying to form it back into some sort of aerodynamic semblance. But again, as Alan said, this is going to cost Jack Sprague some serious track position. It'll be fun to see if he can make up that track position. All this work going on in the right front corner, and it appeared as if one of the braces had, in fact, broken. Yeah, right there at the back of that uh, wheel opening there, you see him pushing down, trying to get that around. The good part is the leading edge of that valence and all does not have any damage to it. If they can get it hooked back, they have to keep their eye on the pace truck, though, as it comes down the front straightaway. They're coming. He does not want to lose a lap right now. Now, here's another curious situation as the field will come down the front stretch. Joe Rutman peels off the racetrack and comes on to pit road. And we're down here in the pits. Jack Sprague, Dennis Connor is talking to Jack Sprague. Dennis, give us an update. You had the sheet metal damage to the right side and a radio problem. How are you guys now? Well, we went to a different radio channel. I guess Chuck Bound must have been on clo a frequency close to ours. And uh, we uh, went to a different channel and got that problem straightened out. The sheet metal damage is the big problem because body conformity is everything on these trucks. So now we've got a push that we didn't have before. And uh, that's probably a... Tell, tell us about the chassis adjustment you just made. Uh, we did so much, I'm not sure what we done, but we took some bite out <laughs> of it. I did some air pressure and uh, tried to do some more on the right front fender. But I think it's torn up so bad that uh, what we've got is what we've got. But. Uh, we got him mad now, so that's when he really goes to digging, so we're, we'll be all right. All right. Little so exasperation there. Yeah, he's pretty Sorry. frustrated. Little we're exasperation there. Sorry, Steve. And uh, Dennis Carter, you could hear kind of irritated at this point. Yeah. Hasn't been their day so far. Yeah, and you know, the real problem that they have right now is an arrow push. It's not a, a chassis push as, as such. So uh, what do you do to adjust for it? The fender's still torn up. Yeah, bring out the welders about all you can do, and there's not enough time to accomplish that. Sprague right now will cycle back 15th in line on the restart. Behind Hornaday, his rival for the championship, who, as you can see, is the first one behind the pace truck. So the difference in points between first and 15th, considerably more than the 28 that was between the two of them when they started off this race. And here's the point leader coming into the event, Jack Sprague, racing for 13th position with Rick Crawford. Well, you see right there, he's got the truck doing a lot better as far as able to run on the low side of the racetrack. The bad part is he's a half a lap back as a leader right now, Biffle. Sprague with a little aerodynamic damage to the right front fender of his truck. You might just barely be able to see it. Got together with a lap truck racing back to the caution flag a little earlier in the event. It has knocked the aerodynamic handling of his machine askew. And he's been kind of fighting with it ever since after leading the first 51 laps of this race. Now, Jack Sprague's truck had a lot of work done to it on the uh, pit stop. Let's go to pit road and Steve Burns. Steve, what'd they do? Well, Jack Sprague's just been on pit road, and he's going to come again, Alan. They had a problem under the hood. They had an air cleaner. This is a hose, a hose that goes to the air cleaner. You can see there's a hole right here. They took the air cleaner off, which is right here, and they're going to put it. They put another one on. Now Jack Sprague is on pit road. They're going to raise the hood again. Boy, it's been a rough day for the guy who's trying to win the 1998 championship. The hood is up, and they're going to try. The air cleaner comes off again. We told you the hose it burned a hole going to the air cleaner. They took both hoses off and changed the air cleaner. Now they're trying to adjust the carburetor, it seems. So big troubles here on the 24. Okay, that was air hoses that go into the air cleaner element itself and goes right into the carburetor, giving it fresh air. What they've done, since they don't have that tube anymore, is put a regular Weston Cup type of air cleaner on there, and it's open on the sides where it'll get fresh air under the hood. Using a little electric impact wrench to bolt it all together. Speed things up. 
Field getting a signal in one more lap. We go back racing, so Spray's going to have to hustle to catch up at the end of the field. See him there in the center of your screen just leaving pit road as the field works right behind him in turn number two. It is so rare to see Jack Sprague have any trouble whatsoever of any kind in these races. He is, has been about the most reliable of any of the trucks in this series. What a time for the problems to happen. He's got yeah. a career total of three DNFs, believe it or not. Since this series began in four years, some guys have three DNFs in the first five races of a series, <laughs> but this guy's had three over four years. Alan, and the bad part, that was under the caution when he and Rick McRae got together and he got all this damage to the front end of the truck that he's having the problems with right now. So Sprague is going to be 18th in line on the restart of the lead lap trucks. By the time they double up, he's about 30th in line actually on the racetrack. Jack Sprague, point leader coming into the race, running 17th right now. Championship standings as of the moment with Hornaday running in fifth and Sprague all the way back in 17th. Hornaday would erase the 28-point deficit and go 15 up on Sprague when they head to the season's final race in Las Vegas in a couple of weeks. You know, if, if this series lasted about 30 years, I think at the end of 30 years, you'd see about 20 points, 10-point difference between those two guys. They are both such focused and intense racers with such quality teams. Always up front. Speaking of tough luck, Jack Sprague has had a, a day full of that today. Just took the 12th spot away a minute ago from Rick Corelli. Ron Barfield also has been bypassed by Spray. Just joining us, he and a truck got together racing back to the caution flag, damaged the right front corner of Sprague's machine. He was leading at the time. He fell back as far as 22nd in the field and has struggled since then to try and regain positions and minimize the point damage to Ron Hornaday, who runs third right now, while Sprague is 12th. And he had engine problems, and he's had radio problems, and probably more problems today in this one race for Jack Sprague than he's had in any 10 races all year long. As far as the championship is concerned, Ron Hornaday's got the upper hand today. He does, at least at this moment. So far, so good. Hornaday running in third. You look back at Jack Sprague. He runs 13th right now. Rick Corelli did get around him a couple of laps ago. So Sprague back in 13th position. Cost him another three points of his lead. And now he will go from 28 in front to 13 behind if they finish as they're running at this point. Steve, I'm with Jack Sprague. Jack started off the day, looked like nobody was going to touch you, and... Uh, then it just kind of all went, went sour on you and uh, go to Vegas now with a 13-point deficit. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's too bad the team JMAC Chevrolet, we, we had a good truck today. And after that first pit stop, we just lost power. And uh, I don't know what happened. They tried to change the air cleaner and uh, look at the linkages and stuff, but just never could get it back. And boy, this place got some awful long straightaways and it's not too easy to, to run good when you don't have the horsepower. But, uh, you know, at least it ran all day. I guess we finished 13th. I wish we were not quite so far down on the points, but who knows? Bet you'll spend a few days at Vegas testing, won't you? Well, we're going to test Vegas Wednesday and Thursday, and we just have to go to win the race and, uh, you know, hope that he can't run second if we do. So that's all we can do. Steve, that's the story from Jack Sprague, a very dejected but humble Jack Sprague.